think it's actually stuck there on the curb. You can see that as the curb was at an angle there, it kind of comes across. The car didn't actually see the curb. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing really well. Today we're gonna to be kicking off our series showing you everything about the Model 3. And we're starting off with something that's probably not high on everybody's list. It's the auto park feature. I'm doing that on day one mainly because I don't know the car well enough and I wanna go through all its other features properly before I show you them all. But auto park's quite simple and I can show you that today. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video on auto park, but also let me know what do you wanna see next about the Model 3? Let me know down below in the comment section. The first test we're gonna do then is this perpendicular space here. So we're gonna go past these two cars. They're a little bit awkwardly parked, especially Especially that Peugeot but I just want to see what the car thinks of it and whether it's gonna park into it okay so we've got the parking space I'm gonna click reverse and then I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna let the model 3 now do it all itself I'm gonna keep an eye out obviously so I can see what's going on but we just want to see is it faster than the model X is it faster than the old hardware how well does it do it and how perfect does it get it okay so it's done its first move there it's moving out now to get itself straight it's got loads of space around it as well. That's kind of why I picked this space, just because there is uh, plenty of space around it. And then it's going to back up, hopefully nice and straight. Oh, it looks like it's slightly overdone itself here. There we go. It's going back in. There we go. Now it's turning back. And it is very, very slowly going back into this space. And is it still going back? I wonder when it's going to stop. And it stops right there. So... For me, like this is okay, but you could see actually there from the diagram that it's not perfectly straight and that right there is straight. I'm just going to go forward and see if from the rear camera, I'm going to show you how I would personally park. I would probably park it something like, probably something like that. That's like the straightness that I would park. I'm not sure which one's more straight. Let me know actually in the top right corner of the screen. Did autopilot get it better or auto park get it better? Or is this actually a straighter park? Okay, so that's perpendicular. It did it fine. But again, it's a little bit slow for my liking. Uh, let's go try parallel space and see how it does on that. Next, we're going to try this parallel space here. So it's definitely big enough for the car. I'm going to go past the eight miles an hour and see if it picks it up. I'm just going to, there we go. So you can see a little P there has turned up on the car click start and now it should auto park us back into that space now this is one of the spaces where previously it did it but it almost reversed into that tree or at least i called it a tree and let's see how it does this time so it's gone in quite sharp actually and now it's coming to slow itself down and now it just needs to turn in if it does this in just like one move like that that is really really impressive Look at that, it's done it. And now it's gone nice and close to the van in front. Oh, slightly overdoing itself here, I think. We're, it needs to kind of straighten that. But there we go, that is what the car says is complete for auto park. And I've got to say, it did it absolutely fine. It's a little bit kind of closer in for my liking, but it did it really well. So if you struggle with auto, uh, sorry, if you struggle with parking, especially in parallel spaces like that, the car should be an absolute dream for you. So what I'm gonna really quickly do as well is turn around and do it again. I just wanna make sure that both directions work for the car. So I'm gonna go past at 10 miles an hour here. I'm just gonna wait and see, I'm gonna slow down. There it is. So it's definitely picked up the parking and you can actually go quite far away from it and it will still track it and still park it for you. So again, let's see if this one does it better this time. It's cutting in nicely there. It does it a little bit tighter than I would, if I'm being honest, but I think it's because I kind of like whip the car in, whereas this does more precision parking. There we go, gets really, really nice and close to the car behind to get itself in. And then tucks itself up very nicely. Now this is where I want the wheel to go completely straight and I just want it to reverse. But you see, it does this little bit of overextension and it kind of tilts the car out a bit. But that is pretty, that is pretty straight, actually. You know what? I'll give you that. That is pretty much perfect parking 
uh, from the Tesla there in parallel. So it's done perpendicular, it's done parallel. Let's go find a little bit of some weird parking spaces to see how it copes and maybe give it some pressure where there's other people around it or other cars around it and see what it does. I've come into the center of town now and as you can see, it is pretty busy. So there's quite a lot of people around. I'm just gonna see how it does parking into spaces here rather than somewhere that I've kind of pre-set up. So we're gonna go to the first space that it's seen and we're gonna see how it does. Now this space actually doesn't have a car on one side. It only has a car on one side and then the rest of it is a curb. So that's actually quite interesting. I've never thought about it trying to do this before and trying to tackle a curb rather than another car. So let's see how fast it does it or whether it's going to slightly touch that curb. We've obviously got families and stuff all around us. So the car seems to be trying to, but I think it's actually stuck there on the curb and it's trying to go up it. So it's gonna do a little bit of a shimmy here. I'm just making sure no one's around uh, so they're not gonna like swing by us. And now we're gonna try and back up here again and see how that works. So we saw initially when it touched the curb, it tried to go up it and that stopped it from parking. Oh, this could be quite bad if that, oh, there was a kid nearly got crushed there on the left. Uh, is it gonna go up the curb? It's gone up the curb. Okay, I've just felt that go up the curb. It's, st it's still going up the curb here, guys. It's still up the curb. Okay, I've gotta show you what that has done. You can see that as the curb was at an angle there, it kind of comes across. The car didn't actually see the curb. So I think what it all, all it saw was that car over there and that line with this line, and it thought it was a perfect perpendicular space. But as you can see, the curb itself has made the car just go up it here on the back, which isn't tragic, but to be honest, I would have thought it would have worked that better. Anyway, let's find another edge case. Let's go into this little underground car park here. So this is a seriously tight car park like incredibly, incredibly tight. And looks like some youth were doing something naughty up there and they've disbanded now that I've come. Uh, let's just see then if it's gonna pick up any of those spaces either side of us. That's really dodgy that they've kind of all <laughs> run inside as I came up here. There we go, okay, we found one space. Let's see what it makes of it. Putting it into auto part. Now this isn't one of the tougher spaces. This is actually one of the easier looking spaces. I kind of wanted to see if it would park in here but to be honest, I don't think it would. I think someone is actually living there now that I'm looking at that place properly. Um, yeah, it's quite tight. It's close to it, but as you can see, it's doing it. It's doing it okay. And just needs one little reshuffle by the looks of it to get into the space. Now we have got a car coming and waiting. So I don't know if maybe he squeezes past, it might change how the car reacts. I'm not 100% sure, but it is doing it um, a little bit slow. Now oh, she waved back, she understands. But look at that, it's actually done it nicely and it's done it pretty straight actually. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty straight. Now what I wanna do is try and park into one of these spaces here, cause you can see how tight and how crazy that is. Is it going to? doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it wants to. No, it's not going to. Okay, so it didn't pick up any of those spaces. And I wonder if that's because there were no cars either side of those spaces. So it just didn't really bother to see them and pick them up. I've just come back to the golf club where I actually tried to do one of these angled parks before on the Tesla Model X. But as you'll rem remember, it failed drastically. You can see how wacky all the cars are going here on the screen. And I just wanna see if it's going to pick absolutely anything up here. I don't think it is, to be totally honest. So I'm just gonna cruise past these guys here. But you can see that the car is definitely not picking up any of these spaces, either to my left or to my right. So it's definitely not gonna be able to park in one of these angled bays, which is a little bit of a shame. Let's see if there's any other bays then around here that we could give it a go at. Now, obviously, there's loads of spaces here, but none of them are going to work for the car because there's no cars either side to judge. And it's not going to be able to read the lines. So I think the next step is it needs to really read these lines a lot better so that actually it can park without cars being either side. So we've got one space here, actually, and it should pick this one up. I'd be very surprised if it didn't. It hasn't, actually. Look at that. It actually hasn't picked it up. Wow, okay. I was expecting it to pick at least that one up. Okay, let's see if it picks up any of these other ones here. We've got obviously golf clubs and stuff all around. Here we go. So we've got a big space here on the left that I'd love to get into if possible. But, ah, there we go. It's found one, but for some reason it's found one on the right-hand side. All right, let's give that one a go, shall we? And see where that space is. Now, this is actually quite interesting. It looks like this space is going to be next to a bush. 
So it's not using a car, but it's going to be using a bush to judge what space it can fit into. Let's see how well it does it. It should actually be able to just drive straight into this spot without having to go forward at all. And it looks like it's doing that, actually. Nope. Okay. No, it's not. It wants to do one little shuffle. And once it's done its shuffle, it's given itself a little bit more space and it should back into it. But I think it's this. It's the time between, like, each movement. It's just too great. It's too much time. And it does this so, so slowly. And you can see here, it's actually changing where it thinks the side is. That changes every now and then. So I think because it's a bush and because it's moving, it's parked. Definitely not straight uh, and not straight in the space either, but it has parked. And I think it's copied the car that side to us, actually. I've set this little test up here. So I wasn't able to find anywhere with a bike in a parking space because obviously most bikes don't park in parking spaces. So I've made this. It's a parallel parking spot that the car can just fit into, but it's using my bicycle and a Segway to hold the bike up. And we're going to see how well the car does here and whether it actually sees the parking space and can park into it because as you can see I'm actually coming at this space at an angle you can see that it saw the bike there it definitely sees the bike does it see the parking space it doesn't look like it no look, it hasn't seen the parking space there so obviously it's not actually an official parking space it is just my car on the side of the road uh, with a bike but that is what it should do it should be able to park in to there pretty much just like that in that kind of speed. So let's go at it a couple of different ways and see if we can make this happen. We're gonna come at it from this direction now. So if we just kind of go past it here and see, there's definitely enough space there. So I'm really hoping that the car sees that there's enough space to park at. I'm gonna come to a break, but no, again, look at that. It's not picking anything up. Let's attempt this one more time then. So we're coming round, there we go. There's the car parking space that we wanna get into. And I'm just gonna go past it now nice and slowly. Uh, yeah, definitely enough space there. It can it sees that it's a bike and is it gonna find that space for us? No, you can see there that it is definitely not finding that space. Let's see if it wants to park next to the Amarok in that space just there. I'm gonna presume that it won't But I don't know. Oh, it picked it up. No way. It's actually picked it up. It picked up the space Okay, let's see what it does here. Sadly I haven't got an external camera for this space because I didn't honestly think it would do it but look at that. It's actually found that space. And, oh, okay. This is interesting because it's stopped because it thinks that the space is behind us, but you can clearly see that the truck is behind us. I'm gonna click resume and see what it does. Yeah, look at that. Canceled. So it thought it could see the space, but as you can see there, it wasn't reading the correct space. One more time past the bikes and past my Model X. I kind of just slowly go past it. It's definitely enough space. It sees the bike. It definitely sees the bike. Is it gonna see that space? And you go back. No, look at that. It's just not interested in finding the space between the bike and the car. So I wonder if, is this because of the bike and the car or is it because we're on an angle? I'm honestly not sure. I've just moved the car over to there and the bike is now behind the car. So we're gonna try and drive past it, slightly going up the driveway there to see if then it will pick up the space because I'm hoping it will do. It should be a big enough space still to fit into. We're going past it here. You can see that it's really confused by the bike and where the bike's positioned. But again, it's just not finding that car parking space. I'm gonna pull up next to it and just make sure that actually it is definitely big enough of a space. Okay, you know what? I've actually misjudged the size of this car. It's not a big enough space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really quickly access my other car through the app and I'm gonna quickly try and get into the space that it should create. So let's move that car forward. As you can see, my Model X is moving forward, giving us a little bit more space there. And that should be hopefully about enough space for a parking space. Okay, how many times did I say space then? Here we go, final time. Can it park next to bikes? Will it use the bikes to park or is this what's causing all the problems? Is it gonna find the space? No, look at that, it's just not finding any space and there's definitely enough there for it to fit into. So, so far what I can see is that 
it does not like to park next to bikes. And that's pretty much it, everybody. That is the auto park feature on the Model 3. Now, if I'm being totally honest, it felt the exact same as my Model X on the hardware 2.0. And I don't think the software really has been changed since uh, hardware 3 has come out. So I, I'm expecting some really big improvements in version 10 of Auto Park, kind of secretly hidden in there because it's pretty basic at the moment and it needs upgrading. But it does work and if you need it, which hopefully you won't, but if you do need it help parking your car, it is pretty good. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell and let me know any other videos you want to see on the Tesla Model 3.